What's up everyone? Welcome to Introducing the Mono Poly Part 2. Had some great comments and feedback from you guys last video, it was great to see. So this one we'll be starting with a quick little beat, then let's get into some of the functionality. So without further ado, let's get into it. <laughs> Okay, so let's take a closer look at the synth and starting with the VCOs. So you've got four VCOs here and they all have four wave shapes each. So starting with the triangle, we're only hearing VCO one here at the moment. So your standard triangle sub sound. You've got a sawtooth. You've got a pulse width modulation. And you've got a pulse width. So let's put that on Sawtooth. Let's start adding the other VCOs. Cool, so let's check out the pulse width modulation now. To control the pulse width modulation, you do it over here. And you've got three sources you can use to modulate the pulse width. So starting with the filter envelope, that's the first option. And then the other two is LFO1, LFO2. So LFO1 has four wave shapes, triangle, sawtooth, reverse sawtooth, and square or pulse. At the moment we're using MG1 or LFO1 to control the, the pulse width. So we can put a slower rate on there which makes a bit more sense. And obviously the same deal for LFO2. Let's put on the filter envelope. So you get the idea. So that's the pulse width modulation. And then pulse width is basically the same thing, just without the modulation option. And you can control the width of the pulse. So standard stuff. Um, there's also a detune, which is nice and useful. So you can apply a little bit of detune between the oscillators. bit of detune on the oscillators so that's nice to have okay so let's check out 
the filter. it can self-oscillate and of course you've got your standard ADSR here both for the filter envelope and for the VCA envelope so you've got a useful trigger switch here for the envelopes so if you want them to trigger just on the first hit you hit it to single and as long as the first note is held it won't re-trigger or you can have it to multiple where it just re-triggers on any note. So that's nice and useful to have right there. So you've also got the auto damp feature here and you have the noise level. Okay, so standard stuff. Let's now take a look at the built-in arpeggiator we have here. So it's a nice simple little arpeggiator, just like on the original. So there's two modes, either on, or latch mode. And I'm sure you know what that means if it's on. It triggers while you hold the keys. If you have it on latch, it'll hold it, obviously. Okay, so there's some different playing styles to the arpeggiator. So standard stuff, you've got up, down, or up, down. So up, notes go up, down, they go down. Up, down, they go up, down. Very standard stuff. And then you have either one octave or two octaves. And then you have full range, which just goes across the full range of the pitch. Okay, so that's all the functions of the arpeggiator. Now we've obviously been in mono mode this whole time and there is a whole other side to the arpeggiator and that's if you use it in poly mode. So in mono mode, all the voices will trigger and play for each single note of the arpeggiator. However, if we flick it into poly mode, it'll basically go round robin now through the voices. So each note of the arpeggiator will trigger a single voice. As you can see there. And obviously the cool thing about that is you can have different timbres on each voice, different waveforms, what have you, and it really lends to experimentation. So let's go ahead and let's demo that a little bit.
Okay, so let's check the effects section. We can turn that on here. Now, with the effects section, you have cross modulation options and you have oscillator sync options. So with the oscillator sync, we can change the frequency or modulate the frequency using either, again, the pitch envelope or LFO1. And you have single and double modes. So let's check that out. So moving on, let's take a look at the key assign mode. Now, obviously we'd be playing in monophonic and that's because we're set here to mono unison mode. And obviously the synth is really famous for having its own little polyphonic mode or as some people call it, duophonic. Let's not open up that can of worms again. So let's take a look at that. Let's go into poly mode. really fun to play with let's let's get a bit more of a string sound so let's put up the modulation on the pulse width So really nice to be able to play chords with this. And obviously there's a maximum of four notes, but there is this unison share mode, which is nice. So in poly mode, if I just hit one note, it just triggers one voice. However, in unison share, it'll calculate it. So it's always playing four voices, basically, no matter how many keys you're holding, which is nice. <laughs> Okay, so that's the poly modes and the monophonic unison mode. Now, there is another mode here in the mono section, and that's chord memory. That was on the original, and that's a nifty little feature where you can set it to a chord, and then you can play that chord just off a single note. So to do that, you go into poly mode, you hit hold, and then you play the chord that you want to use. So do that, and then you just go to chord memory. And now you can play that chord off a single note, which is very fun. Let's check that out.
then finally in the key assign mode, there's the hold function, and that just works like a latch, and you can latch onto the last note. And also on the LFO front, you guys had been asking in the comments whether you can do the old trick of putting it into audio rates. And this you can do. So. so here we've got the LFO going um, on the triangle. But if you put it in between some of the wave shapes, you basically put it into audio rates. So let's do that. And that's basically it. So there is the portamento section, obviously, pretty standard stuff. And then you have your wheel section or your modulation wheels here, which you can patch to different elements. So it's either VCO1, slave VCO, pitch, or the VCF. Wow.